Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 173, we're going to talk about system layout. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Well, you might have noticed that we've got this really neat piece of equipment on the desk. And because we're actually going to be heading into the music room in a minute. We pretty much had to have something on screen just to show off. <laughs> but this is really cool. It's made in Japan. And what it is, is an, is an automatic Variac, basically. Um, and of course, a Variac is just a, a variable uh, voltage device. Here, let me show you on the inside. Now, we on our benches, we're always working away with state with um, regulated and unregulated supplies of various types. So this is what you would typically see in a Variac here. And there's your big wiper. And as the um, the arm here moves along, it'll wipe and pick up a different point of the winding and it'll pick up a different voltage. So this is a way of maintaining uh, the AC voltage that's going to our equipment at a set level. Yeah, it's it's fairly primitive, but it has got uh, one IC in it and um, or two ICs, I think. And, yep. But it's it actually doesn't work exactly the way we need it to. So Charles has got it on the bench and he's got the circuit all reverse engineered and he's playing with it so yeah i'm going to see if i can make it a little bit more sensitive and, and a little bit more accurate at the same time yeah but have no fears your orders are still going out on time <laughs> <laughs> mostly <Yep. laughs> sometimes we get distracted we just thought this was a neat piece of test equipment and wanted to show it off before we move on to the, into the main episode yeah some of you have your own benches and um and have variax so this is basically an electronic automatic variax so kind of cool anyways Leave it to the Japanese to come up with neat stuff. So, back to topic. Improving your system can be as simple as where you actually put the components. When I was a young audiophile, way back, I mean, back in the 1970s, God, it was a long time ago now, everyone either put the equipment in a dedicated equipment stand, which was basically a small bookcase. If you were lucky, it was painted black <laughs> or had black vinyl covering on it. And well, if it was the 70s, I'm sure there was a lot of faux wood paneling. <laughs> oh, I think that was a little before my time, thank God. And if you were really rich and lucky, you had a fancy glass door, maybe even a curved glass door on the front. And if you had your stuff together, you probably had a commercial rack mount set up. Now, neither one of these is ideal. First, they, they lack ventilation, which is really important, especially for tube gear. But, you know, there's some big solid state amps out there that really need ventilation as well. And second, stacking one unit on top of another, even on separate shelves, means you basically have one set of noisy gear on top of another. And not very far apart at that. The only real advantage is that they don't take up that much space. So let's head over to the music room and we're going to look at two better options in our own system. Well, welcome to the music room. So this is, this is a modern rack system, but it's, it's sort of like what we used to have back in the day. Back in the day, we used to have solid sides. So this is a big improvement. In fact, um, I found this with a pretty high quality system. It had the Lynn turntable on it and at the time it had uh, a Lin integrated amp, I think, if I remember rightly. Anyways, but we, what we've done here is we've just set it up with the Wilsonton R8. This is not its normal home. It sits basically on a lab table, a working table. <laughs> so, but it's a good example of what happens. There's nine tubes, four power tubes, five preamp tubes in this amp. And all that heat's got to go somewhere. So if you've got a vinyl set up, the turntable pretty much has to go on the top. If you had, um, you know, a streaming setup, that would be better. You could stick the R8 on top of a rack like this. You're streaming stuff down here. If you had tape, you could stick it further down. But this is not ideal. It'll work, but it's not ideal. So let's head over in a second and take a look at one of our setups.
Okay, so this is the setup that we had for a long time. And we started, we always have had the turntable over on the right hand side. You of course could have it completely reversed to what we're talking about. But the turntable or a streaming device, anything that's got a very low signal, keep it away from the power amps, which are over here. In this setup, we've got the universal phono pre right here. We've got a dedicated stepped attenuator right here. You don't necessarily have to have that in your system. It just adds a lot of clarity in ours. And we've got the universal control preamp right here. You might notice that we've got some fabulous um, 12 volt tongue saws with the mouse ears. And man, they are, the definition on those tubes is just unbelievable. They don't quite have the warmth of the Sylvanias. So, you know, for a couple of weeks, maybe even a month, we'll have the tongues in the main system and then we'll revert back to the Sylvanias. And sometimes we'll even have the photons in. In fact, quite a bit. If the photons end up in the system, they stay in for a long time because they, that's got to be the, the most affordable, best vintage 6SN7 ever made. I, I would give it a Best Buy award every time. Anyways, I think I'm off topic, Charles. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Usually when Charles is beside me, he keeps me focused. <laughs> so um, over here we've got the right hand uh, GU50 monoblock and the left hand GU50 monoblock and roughly um, uh, 12 feet of speaker cable as a result. So in this setup, we have really fairly short uh, RCA patch cords. And because these, these are actually all prototypes for the new um, RCA kit uh, um, patch cords that are going to be in the store sometime soon, hopefully, um, I was able to sort of build them. Now, they're all a little different because they're all prototype builds. But I was able to build them you know, to my precise specifications and that's going to be a big part of how we're going to handle the the um, cable kits is that you'll be able to actually build it to uh, exactly the length you want and we'll pre-cut them for that anyways um, off topic again <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so the advantage of this system is that everything is up here you've got you've got nothing no equipment really below other than you know idle equipment that's not running i've got actually a, a speed box here for the for the turntable but it's nicely shielded but we've got the the low noise um, gear at this end we've got the bigger more uh, powerful higher noise gear at this end and everything has some space there's nothing over it there's nothing under it and it's easy to access and for a long time this was our favorite way to set up the system and uh, and it's very easy to change things around, which we do constantly, of course, as we test gear. So in a second, we're going to go and we're going to see um, our current setup, which is sort of a variation on this. But we get these big honking amps close to the speakers. And that, we found, gives us the best sound. Okay, let's head over. Okay, so this is our current setup. And it's, it's a little different than what you'll normally see. And it's made possible with a really long pair of RCA cords that I manufactured. They're prototypes, actually. We're gonna have kit RCA cords coming soon. Um, but we've got some really uh, high quality um, cable, Belden cable, and um, a good design for a low noise, low resistance 18 foot cable. And We'll see those in place in just a minute. So let's just look at the system from beginning to end. So what we've done again is the turntable, which is a very low output device, is at the beginning of the input stage. In our system, it moves right to left. Yours could move left to right. That would be fine as well. So we've got the table. Next, we've got, we've got a uh, phono preamp. This is the universal uh, that everybody loves. And after that, we've got um, another kit that's soon to come. This is the stepped attenuator. This is fabulous. This is the best volume pot that I know how to design. It's dead easy, dead simple, and best of all, the clarity is amazing. You don't 
most systems will not have a dedicated volume control. So that could be out of the system easily. But most of you are going to have a phono preamp. Either it's going to be tube or solid state. So that should be as close to the turntable as practical. Then we've got a control preamp. This is the Universal 6 or 12 SN7. And from there, we've got a pair of really long 18 foot RCA cables that are patched in here. They're built with a locking RCA connector, so a long cable can be fairly heavy, and that's kind of important. So they don't actually just, you can't get them off without unlocking the barrel. Anyways, so as you can see, again, we've got the very low signal input well away from the noisy bits over here. And, um, and we're going to see, in just a second, we're going to go over to the speakers, and we'll see where the monoblocks are hiding. Okay, so we're over here on the right hand side of the speakers and we got our open baffles over here and we've got our first G50 monoblock parked here. And th this setup of course only works if you're running monoblocks. It doesn't matter if you're running solid state or two monoblocks. Uh, this works really well. So because the longest RCA cable is 18 feet, that meant that I had to build the shorter one 18 feet. It, it just makes perfect sense because you add a little bit of capacitance when you have that long a cable and you add a small amount of resistance. So it's going to have a very, very tiny effect on the EQ. That's the equalization. It's so small though that we can't hear it. You probably could measure it. Well, we can measure it because we've been specking our cables. And uh, so, but here's the game. There's always a give and take in audio. And, um, and when you have to give up something, you really don't want to do it unless you get something big in return. And here's the huge thing you get in return. And that is a very, very short speaker run. I think the cables are 36 inches. 40 inches, uh, uh, let's call it a meter, 39 inches or a meter. They're really somewhere around there. And we're, I'm using a, a Lynn speaker cable that is um, that actually has sort of a bridge that divides the conductors. And we did um, a little test just uh, just a week or so ago. And wow, the, the Lynn's, the short Lynn's versus our longer standard cables or even our standard cables shortened up that the lint cables are just fabulous the level of clarity is just amazing and best of all i got a whole bunch of lint cable for free and i did you know a big lot of equipment i bought so anyways and then i just remade them of course to my correct size so there is a big advantage to doing it this way in that that long unshielded section of speaker wire is short and amps at least uh, tube amps appear to really like to have a short run to the speakers. Uh, the, the, the previous way we looked at it works absolutely fine. You can do it that way, but I think, I think Charles did, our basic, our basic conclusion was that overall the, we there had... There was an improvement in sound. There yeah. was an improvement in sound to do it this way. And our general rule is if we don't have to give up too much to get that improvement, we take it every time. <laughs> well, let's head over to the lab to say goodbye. Okay, we're back in the lab. You might have noticed that um, Wardy here uh, got into the shot, and that's because this is um, my mom's fa dog's favorite toy. She has a little Yorkie Terrier, and at Christmas time, I went shopping for the very best, most durable toy we could possibly buy, which cost a fortune. And usually, Jordy will tear these things to shreds in... Less than 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes. So I made a deal with the guy at the cash. I said, if it survives 20 minutes plus one, I'm not going to bring it back. But if it doesn't, then I'm bringing this expensive thing back. And look at it, it's still in one piece. Anyways, Jordy, uh properly called a warthog, a pink war warthog, um, just loves to be in the shots, and we've got huge orders of vintage tubes inbound. And depending on how fast the planes fly in the... We might have them for next Friday. We might have them for next Friday. 
And uh, so we don't really have anything exciting to show off, except Warty here thought, well, I'll stand <laughs> in for the tubes. But, um, uh, okay, Warty, you've got to go somewhere else for the moment. So uh, the, the main thing to take away from system layout is what you think will work well may work well, or it may not. And th the way to figure these things out uh, is to try a different layout. Mm -hmm. Experiment, see if having a longer cable in one section is going to be beneficial compared to another. There's all sorts of things that you can do. Yeah, I mean, we do this on the bench all the time when we're designing equipment. And sometimes you just accidentally find something that you never thought would work well. And wow, it works great. And yep. so it becomes a keeper. So I encourage everyone to look at their system layout and see if you can make an improvement. And it probably doesn't cost you more than a little bit of time. Well, if you stay to the very end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Remember, we can get almost, to almost everybody around the world with $20 flat rate shipping. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, the shipping's on us, folks. And people are grabbing the discount codes, especially the easy to figure out hidden code down here, which is great. I love to see customers and uh, viewers grabbing the discount codes. This is Jim and Charles signing off. Cheers, everyone.